here and welcome to my next video. Today we're going to be in East London. East London, Bow and perhaps a little bit of Stratford. I'm not too sure yet but we're going to have a walk around. Uh, it's mainly going to be about industry, the rivers and the waterways. So without further ado, put your best Scotch egg forward and enjoy the video. We're off. Heading towards those gas cylinder rings you can see, what remains of them, they're fully disused now. Uh, there's quite a few plans ahead for them. At the moment I'm having trouble getting there. I'll find a way, I'll always find a way. To find the, what remains of the gas works. Uh, they're built between 1870 and 1873. There's still seven of these frameworks left. I'm not sure what they're going to do with them. I think they're going to knock some down and they might even convert them into flats. Now you're looking at that you think well how are they going to convert those into flats? If you get a chance go to King's Cross they've got a similar sort of situation there and they've actually made flats within those frameworks. I mean personally I think they're a complete eyesore at the moment but uh, you convert them into flats and they really look like something really good. The framework of the cylinders is just there and we're just, just going to look for this secret garden. I'm not sure it's here but uh, we'll have a look. I'll keep the video rolling. It's, like a mo it's meant to be a memorial garden. Ah, there we go, I found something. Now I did do a bit of reading before I came out today. I always do, believe it or not. I'm not I don't just turn up. Now that gas lamp there never goes out apparently. It's continually on. What have we got here? I've got a rotunda. I often come across rotundas in my videos. <laughs> Here we've got a plaque or a plaque of remembrance. Oh, these are workers that laid down their lives for us and for their country. That was probably the First World War. I would believe. Not sure if anyone knows. Put something in the comments. Let's go into this rotunda. That's another memorial plaque for people that died. No, it's actually the Second World War. I do beg your pardon. That one's the Second World War. It's a memorial to the governor of the gas works, the Gas Light and Coke Company. He was the governor between 1906 and 1916. So now we're going to move on to Cody Dock, which should be just around the corner, but yet again, I'll probably get lost. So we have to look round and see. I know roughly where I've got to go, but as per usual, I think there's roadworks in the way. Yeah, there we go. I always manage to get a road that's blocked. That footway's blocked. I always go on diversions. I wonder why. Always put on diversion, even when I'm in work. <laughs> right, some major works going on here. On we go. A couple of diversions, we've ended up at Cody Dock, here's the main entrance. Somewhere I live, it says. Cafe's open as well. So just walking through the entrance now, a pathway. There's a lot of business units on here as well. Just like the whole the whole area is full of uh, businesses. I think this is more arty though, the Cody Dock. A lot of art and sculpture. Business units there. A calf. So this has been the dock at some time way in the past and they've developed it a bit. It was actually closed, I come here 
We only see it about 10 years ago, it's completely closed up. It's like the, the old area of the Lee Valley, there's stuff being regenerated, which is good to see. Hello, we've got a transformer. Piece, piece of artwork here. There's a river lee there going out to the Thames. Parts of the dock here are actually closed to visitors. They're doing a lot of development. Plus there's a lot of COVID restrictions. That looks really nice. Loads of works of art. If you like art and sculpture, there's loads to see here. There's another one of those transformers. And a small boat there. That actually looks like the boat that was in my Mersey video. They bought it here and been converted. Made something of it. I love it when people repurpose stuff. I love it. There's a telephone box. Split telephone box. If you like your photography as well, this is a good place to come. It's one of those transformer looking figures again. Wow. Also found another something else. What else have we found around here? Oh, an art studio. I don't think anything's happening today. Not sure if it's an art studio, just a sculpture. Obviously I'm just videoing today, I'm not touching anything, there's loads of advice, don't touch. So I'm doing exactly that. Doing as I'm told. Danger, deep water. I won't necessarily worry about the deep water because the current on this will take you. The undercurrents, currents, subcurrents, currents coming off of currents. You go under, you'll never come up again. There's the city of London, just across the water there. So I'm going to continue this walk coming out of Cody Dock. The head towards the three mills and the old fall block. Coming up to another sculpture now, it looks like a stack of old is it? supermarket trolleys. <laughs> well, at least they made purpose with them. What's all this about? I think there's all, all, all supermarkets are represented. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's have a look. We've got a description over here. We've now come up to three mills just along the river here 
Um, it, it's actually called Three Mills. There's actually only two now, but once there used to be four mills. Uh, it was built in 1776 and was used to make flour. And as you can see, I'm just going to zoom in there. Get there. And it's actually on pillars. The actual building is completely supported on pillars. Now this was the largest tidal mill in the there's world. actually two mills that are here now. Uh, there's one of the wheels there. And across the way, there's another one. You probably can't see it in the video. The whole area's got loads and loads of history. As well as uh, grinding flour, or making flour as it was with the mills. Uh, that, for a short while they actually produced gunpowder here. And then later on, even gin. Just come around the back of uh, three mills. This is the uh, view from the other side. Not quite as impressive, is it? And just over there is, what, is the three mill studio. I'm going to go over there and give you a bit of info. Come behind three mills now. This is what's known as the three, three mills river lock or three mills river weir. It was actually constructed, or it was actually the water was diverted off the River Lee onto here, so it was not tidal. Uh, this helped with the construction of the Olympic Park. Uh, barges would come along here with construction material. And as you can see, just over there, that's towards Bow, they're, they're uh, redeveloping again. It's constant developing in this area at the moment. There's the weir there. Here's the entrance to the Three Mill Studio. Uh, I think this is currently where they uh, film MasterChef. Originally, I don't know if it was this area, it might have been over the back near Bow Lock, they uh, filmed Big Brother. So there's quite a lot of filming, I think uh, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels was filmed here as well, or parts of it was. It's got loads of film history around here. Going back to the Big Brother the first series that was as I said before that was held here there was a bit of controversy uh, local, the tabloid rung a story about the SAS getting into the Big Brother household undetected uh, it was completely unfounded and was completely untrue here we have the site of the original Bow Bridge it was ordered to be made by Queen Matilda she was the wife of Henry the first uh, it was distinctive in as much as it had like an arch underneath it now that arch was shaped like a bow, and hence it gave its name to Bow. Bow was to the left, that was then in Middlesex, and to the right was Stratford. Believe it or not, that was Essex. The old Bryant and May match factory. Boy, it's absolutely massive, it goes right the way back there. The grandiose exterior of the old match factory. However, hidden behind here were the employees that suffered medical conditions, which we will discover now.
Just at Bow Lock now, there's a close up of the bridge. So the barges will come on the right here, towed by the horses. The horse will go over the bridge. You can see those ridges there, that's to stop the horse slipping. So right there you've got the Limehouse Cut, the beginning of it which leads straight into the Limehouse Basin. To the left here you've got the River Lee, the main River Lee. Before we go into the Limehouse Cut, ask the question why was the Limehouse Cut built? There was a problem. During the 1700s barges would use this River Lee on the left so not only were they be taking grain away or, or, or goods away from London, they'd be bringing goods in as well. The big problem was it was tidal and it took so long to navigate. Remember, they'd have to wait for the tide to go out to take them out to London Basin. So in 1767, they decided to build the Limehouse Cut. It was dug in 16 months, and this made it a lot, lot quicker getting to that River Thames. It was not tidal, you didn't have to wait. It was a lot economical, and it was a lot speedier as well. Remember, time equals money, and time they didn't have enough of. Now into the main part of the Limehouse Cut. So both sides of this river would have been lined with factories and premises, all getting premier positions to get their goods in and out. London so now we had the speed but there was another problem just around the corner steam and in particular the railways they were a lot faster just come across the infamous Spratt's dog biscuit factory uh, it was built in 1860 it's primarily dog food but also other pet food and as time went along it was uh, produced human food for us believe it or not this was blitzed during the Second World War. Would have been a load of derelict buildings. Now it's all been redeveloped. Housing apartments, etc. All the way down to the Limehouse Basin. We've just come to, we're well, getting near the end of the Limehouse Cut. I think it would have ended here, because the actual basin we're going into was a lot larger and the outlay here was completely different. And just up there, that was the uh, threat. It was the steam railway. It would have been the Great Eastern Railway, that particular line of track there. That was the threat that was, that was going to overtake the uh, canals and did so. The age of steam had arrived. In actual fact, the curve which you can see today was constructed in 1968. This would have been so the Limehouse Cut could connect to the Limehouse Basin. Previously, before 1968, this river would have been straight. It would have gone straight to the Thames where it would have had its own independent lock. The word Limehouse in Limehouse Basin uh, was named after the lime kilns which were predominant in the area. The actual basin here, not as you see it now because it would have been completely different, was constructed in 1820 by the Regent's Canal Company. Uh, it would have supplied the Midlands, so the Regent's Canal goes through Paddington and right up to the Midlands there, that would have been the main supply. It did supply the River Lee, but in a different sort of way. There was no direct connection as there is now. It was mainly transport of coal and timber. So that's the end of the video folks, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to press that subscribe button if you want to see more. See you next time, bye.